cannot give you back your homes or restore your dead to life, but perhaps I can give you justice in the name of our king. Westeros barely has any major houses left in the realm. When you think about it, House Tyrell is barely holding on. House Martell is now run by Ilaria Sand, Oberyn's paramour. House Baratheon has pretty much gone extinct, and well, there's really not a major family that has many kin left in their ranks. Because of all the death, many royal positions have become abandoned, including the small council. You know the small advisory board that consists of people like the Master of Coin, the Hand of the King, the Grand Maester, and others? Well, one that isn't talked about too much is the Master of Ships. This position holds the responsibility of maintaining the Royal Fleet, training and growing the necessary crews, and of course commanding the ships in battle. When the events of Game of Thrones starts, we know Stannis Baratheon as the Master of Ships serving his king brother, Robert Baratheon. After Stannis rebels against the crown and eventually travels south, the seat is up for grabs. Only after the Tyrell and Lannister allegiance is negotiated with the marriage of Joffrey and Marjorie, Tywin selects Mace Tyrell as the new Master of Ships. And as we all know, Mace died in the Great Sept of Baelor from Cersei's wildfire attack. Now the position is once again open. Actually many of the small council seats are vacant, but with Cersei at the reins now, she may rule without a proper council, since she cannot really trust anyone these days, except for Kyburn. The reason I bring this all up is because there is a certain allegiance I believe will be happening in Season 7, House Greyjoy and House Lannister. I'm not referring to Yara and Theon, but rather Euron, their savage uncle. As you know, Euron has claimed the Salt Throne. In the books, Euron is much more savage than the other characters in the series. He prides himself on being the best naval commander in the known world, where he sails with a crew that has no tongues, thanks to him, because Euron apparently likes the silence as this is what he named his ship. At the end of Season 6, Euron ordered his men to build 1,000 ships. He plans to not only give his nephew and niece a piece of his mind, but to take Daenerys for his own. Now, 1,000 ships would take some time to build, and I'm assuming the story would fast forward quite a bit to get to that point, but once they do, Euron will do whatever it takes to get his way. That's why I believe he will negotiate some sort of partnership with Queen Cersei and in turn, Cersei will give Euron the royal fleet and make him the master of ships. It makes perfect sense, doesn't it? Cersei has no naval commander, and to keep an edge on her enemies, her forces need to be amphibious. That's where Euron comes in. He was just introduced to the show, with foreshadowing of big events to come, so I think him becoming the master of ships would be quite the perfect fit. House Lannister doesn't have many bannermen left, especially after the wildfire incident. If anything, there will be some turmoil in King's Landing, since everyone seems to know who is responsible. One other thing to note is that Euron has sailed nearly everywhere, at least compared to your average ship captain. He has navigated his way through Old Valyria, where in the books he picked up a full suit of Valyrian steel armor, and he even claims to have been to a shy. He apparently forced warlocks to train him in sorcery as well. I'm not sure the show will include these adaptations of him, but if they do, he may not be as weak as the average man. It'll be interesting to see what Euron does. I hope you liked the video, everyone. Let me know who you think will be on Cersei's new small council, and her plans for the realm in Season 7. Have a great day, take care, and I'll see you tomorrow.